What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I'm your host, David Soto Jr. And today's topic required a little bit of research and it was based off of episode five entitled proud to be mexican-american and a comment that somebody left for me on youtube uh the question was what do i think mexican-americans should put uh when marking the census under race uh my answer to that person was i don't know and that's what I put, <laughs> or I leave it blank, or I put, and not just the census, but any other, like, I, I've applied for government jobs, I've been uh, associated with the government for my entire adult life until I retired from the military in 2015, so there's been all kinds of forms that I, I've had to fill out, and eventually it got to the point where I did not mark anything, or there's an option chose not to answer. And not because I wanted to be like, well, I don't know. You know, when your options are um, Native American, Asian, Black, White, and uh, Pacific Islander, where would I fall in? And I've always been curious about that, always wondered and even my driver's, like one of the driver's license I got, or maybe I got a, I got a ticket one day in, I wonder if it was Tucson, Arizona, where when it came down to race, the police officer filled in a W, obviously for white. Um, and that always, that always bothered me that... I don't even look any. I don't, I don't even look anywhere close to white. I don't think. In fact, I am more commonly mistaken for black than I am white. Uh, my entire life, and and a funny thing that I just thought of, I was mistaken as Asian when I was uh, young. And uh, my dad always used to say that he had a friend from work that used to call me Fuji, because I got slanted eyes um which is kind of ironic because when we look at the races okay so the research what i had to do was find out about conquering uh mexico how it was conquered that led to a, a book called conquistador which i listened to and it was like mind blow like now that I don't know if it's because I'm an adult or what, or because I get to choose the topics. But when I study history now, I find it so much more interesting than the shit they forced down my throat in, uh, in school. So Hernan Cortez led this basically invasion of Mexico. And simply because he wanted the gold that he saw, he wanted the resource that the, the Aztecs didn't find as valuable. Uh, they found it, basically they found it uh, aesthetically pleasing. They used it as decoration, but they were like, it's gold, man. Shit comes from the earth. But, of course, uh, Cortez saw dollar signs. That doesn't make sense, does it? Pesos. He saw peso signs, and um, everything that he collected from the Aztecs was like, decorations masks um they were things made into they were so it was gold made into certain things and it wasn't used as a currency it didn't make the aztecs rich and so everything all the gold he collected he melted down into like bars so that they can be counted and weighed evenly and distributed and that man took an entire nation, entire civilization of people down for gold. It was actually quite an impressive feat. And then, every you know, you want to think, oh, you know, Mexican roots and 
this man Cortez, he's a piece of shit. But actually, the Aztecs were kind of assholes too. Um, based on sheer numbers, they could conquer any of the other uh, tribes in Mexico if they wanted. And so all the other tribes basically submitted to uh, the Aztecs and uh, Montezuma uh, in particular as their leader. And because the Aztecs believed in human sacrifice and they didn't want to sacrifice their own, they went out to these other tribes. If you saw Apocalypto, Apocalypto, Apocalyptico, that Mel Gibson movie, which, uh, where those uh, the Aztecs came in, into this guy's tribe and just you know killed everyone and took a bunch of people hostage and didn't kill everyone obviously, but you know they just raided the raided their village and took everyone hostage and they took them all for human sacrifice. Um, so part of the reason why Cortez was able to take down uh, Teotitlan, the Mexican capital or the Aztec capital, was for the for the help he got from all these other pissed off Indians. They were like, first they were like, "Fuck you, Cortez," and they'd fight him and lose. And then they're like, "Ah, just kidding. We'll be on your side. We'll help. We'll help you kick this guy's ass." And uh, they did. And because the Aztecs were so st uh, strong-willed or stubborn, they would not submit, and uh, the capital island was completely destroyed, burned down, and destroyed until it was too. Until the finally, um, Montezuma had already passed away and died. Um, he was captured. He was kind of a passive person um, and thinking that working with Cortez would, everything would pass over and be, when in, in return, Cortez took him hostage and uh, imprisoned him. Uh, his people saw him as weak and, and somebody threw, basically somebody threw a rock at his ass, hit him in the head and that dude died. And so the next guy that filled in, I think there was at least maybe one person that di and then died of smallpox and then somebody else filled in and this dude was kind of a hard ass and they fought the shit out of Cortez. Um, but so basically, if we look at Mexico, uh, what is now current day Mexico, uh, or, you know, we were natives first and we didn't have any of these names. Soto, Hernandez, Garcia, we didn't have, those are Spanish names from European settlers. So, Mexico is, as I always, everybody knows, is a, a, a mestizo country, uh, mixed, right, mixed blood of different races. Okay, so what race was, and here's the thing, it turns out races, the categories of races are complete bullshit, they're completely made up. Uh, the origin, one of the origins, I can get some German guy to say, okay, I'm going to give you, uh, we're going to categorize humans into five races and based on color, based on white, black, brown, red, and yellow. Uh, so he categories, he had five race categories, uh, white, black, uh, yellow was Asian, red was native American, or native um, native the American natives. I don't know what the politically correct term is, but the natives of the Americas, not just like Native American, is what we classify people who were here before uh, Europeans. I mean, we're not just not just United States. We're talking America, the continent. All right. A lot of people don't know that, but America is a continent. So when you say you're American, you could be talking about being Mexican because they are in the continent of America. But and then the other one was, uh, I forget what the other one was. But nowadays we don't even look at that. Uh, we don't even look at two of them. It, at one point they were narrowed down to three. And so all of my research shows, except for what I found out about this guy that, who originated, but the other two, the brown and the reds were absorbed into the other uh, three. And so 
the three races that are most known as black, white, and Asian, Caucasian, Negroid, Mon Mongoloid, right? Black, white, Asian, or white, Asian, black, whatever, those three. And where if you look under Asian, uh, Native Americans fall under this classification as, as Asian. It seems pretty weird. Sometimes you'll, it's like uh, the alphabet, A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes why? Sometimes there's a fourth race, which would be the the Aboriginal or the Abor the Abor the Australian cats, but then those guys fall under Asian if you just look at the three. So I don't know. I, it's hard to get a definite answer of what is out there, and I think a reason why it's so hard to get a definite answer of what the races are is because it's completely made up bullshit. There is no determining factor of what makes a person fall under one race. Um, especially with this whole 23 and me thing that everybody's doing, all coming to find out that they have, people coming to find out that they have some uh, uh, African in them. So, it doesn't, does that make it, I don't know. It's a whole confusing thing. And again, because it's completely made up. There is no such thing, actual thing, as race. There's no biological, biological, scientific, anything way to prove what an actual race is. It's just made up. Uh, let me check my notes here. So, let's say that based on how humans got to the continent of America, they came from Asia, uh, walked across Alaska. Hey, yeah. I said hi to Sarah Palin on the way through there. So that uh, that strait that ex the, the Bering Strait that exists between Alaska and Siberia, I think, that used to be frozen over, and uh, cats would just walk over. Like, hey, there's America. Let's go over there. And it had to be a long, long, long. You know, it's like twelve thousand years ago or something like that. But it had to be a long process. Like hundreds and hundreds of people had to traverse this this frozen. Uh, uh, land or sea or frozen street whatever and then like oh it's cold this is canada man this is cold as shit let's let's go down to mexico and even further <laughs> um i mean obviously all the way down to the end of the continent it's just amazing to fathom how people and when you watch these documentaries and stuff you see a couple people a couple caveman they're throwing spears and they're walking and it, it, they're representing them walking into and, you know, across the ice, the, the ice into, but it had to be hundreds of thousands of people doing this, not just a couple of people. So if that's the case, the natives of the Americas would probably be Asian, as far as race goes. Uh, if it comes to, this dude's on the phone right outside. What people don't understand, I'm trying to record podcasts. And, you know what's frustrating is when people are like, in public places. Yeah. Uh-huh. On speakerphone. Yeah. I told that dude to stay away. What? Oh, are you kidding me? Ain't nobody else wants to hear a conversation, man. Oh, my gosh. The things the things that frustrate me. Kind of ridiculous, actually. So, we would, we would be Asian. Again, well, if there's a race class of Native Americans, then we would be Native Americans, right? Maybe we should check that. But the reason we all have Spanish last names is because we're mixed European, which would be which would be classified as white, right? So what do we put down? Do we put down Native American? Do we put down Asian? Hmm. Uh, another thing is, I've always thought when people talk shit about Mexicans that they were being racist. And then when I realize it's not a race, I'm like, it's not racism. That's, I call it ethnic insensitivity. Um, but being Mexican is two things that qualify you to be Mex. Oh, I don't know if that's the right statement. There's two things that I think of, the classifications of Mexican. Uh, one is nas Mexican nationality. The other is Mexican ethnicity. So here I am, Mexican-American. My nationality is American. American son, actually United States resident. 
or United States citizen. So if I go to another country, let's say I go to Mexico, they, call, they would say I'm uh, un estado unidense, a United States Sarian or something, right? Not American because Mexicans are Americans too because, again, because of the continent. But nationality. My nationality is American because I was born in America. Oh, fuck, I said, did it again, see? My nationality is the United States because I was born in the United States. A Mexican's nationality is Mexican if they were born in Mexico. That's nationality. Uh, a mistake I used to ask a long time, you know, all the time. I say Asian dude, I'm like, hey dude, what's your nationality? And thinking like, I'm asking him, uh, what his ethnicity is, right? <laughs> or what his f family background is, and, and that, in a sense, is ethnicity. People still ask me what my nationality is. I'm American. Fuck, does it served in the Air Force, 23 years, shit, born here, blue passport, every, all that shit, American. United States. I'm just so everybody. We're also trying to say American, <clears throat> and so. Oh my God, this guy's walking by my van, talking on the phone. And the other is ethnicity, which relates to culture, right? Mexican, and that's why where you get into like the stereotypes uh, and the culture of, of uh, you know, our music, our food, our language, you know, our extra loud, everything we do is extra loud, the way we talk, the way we dress, the way the, the, the way we uh, decorate our cars. Um, but that's culture. So I was kind of having a discussion with somebody and somebody was like if you got a nigerian who's born in mexico that doesn't make them mexican i'm like yeah it does it makes them mexican citizens it makes their nationality mexican you born in mexico you get a mexican passport you're mexican um if they leave at a young age and go to another country they're less likely to say Nigerian. They're less likely to say that they're Mexican because they don't have the culture, right? They didn't grow up. But say that same person, born there, Mexican passport, Mexican nationality, stays there, grows up there, learns to make mole and, and fucking listen to music and eat tortas and all that stuff, right? Um, then that cat... If, Ethnicity is now Mexican. I think. Makes sense to me, right? Born in Mexico, raised in Mexico, have Mexican culture, speaks the Mexican language, which is Spanish, right? Makes that guy Mexican. Uh, and I, as I, as I'm, what I'm learning through the years, and this was a book, and I wish I knew who wrote this book. I don't even remember the title of it. It's not re really when I was reading a bunch But I used to go by the moniker Brownheart because I thought it was cool because I think that's what makes a person Mexican. Um, not their biological origin, but the quote-unquote color of their heart. And people, I used to say that, and there's a lot of gringos, right, who love the music, love the culture, love the language, love the food, go to these Latin American countries and fit in and blend in and, and absorb the culture. And they are as Mexican as anyone else, regardless of where they were born. And I say that those are those people have brown hearts. And so what I'm realizing now is that's ethnicity, that's culture. And if you want to associate with that or identify with that, that's cool. Uh, I'd say you can't identify with a race. I th was thinking, right? You can't identify for as a race. So that lady that was like says she identifies black. The thing is, is that's, that's races made up. There's no biological difference when you break down the human uh, uh, DNA. Oh, I don't know if it's a true statement or not, but there's no significant, there's no, no significance in what white DNA is and black DNA is and Asian DNA is as human beings. This is apparently what I understand from researching 
that there is no difference biologically in between the races. Um, and so, like I said, I used to think you can't say you're Asian if, like, I can't say I'm Asian. But the, all that shit is made up. They're just classifications to, uh, basically, based on color, to create a hierarchy of humans. And uh, it's bullshit. Anyways, Mexican is eth- ethnicity or nationality. Mexican can be either. So my nationality is United States. My eth- ethnicity is a Mexican. Oh, I think I feel like I covered everything. Wow. Okay. Uh, fun fact, though, Hernán Cortés was the father of the first mestizo. What's, what's possibly the first mestizo? Uh, he had a, he had an interpreter slash uh, mistress named Malicha, and she was a. Oh, I forgot what tribe she was from. He was. They were given to her by the. Was it Tabasco? I don't know. There's so many terms that I heard that refer to hot sauce. It's ridiculous how many terms in listening to this book uh, or, or tribes relate to uh, hot sauce. Cholula tribe. Hot sauce. Tabasco, I think, was another one. Anyways, he was a gift from a chief, and she was really good at... She was from another uh, tribe, so she spoke that language. She picked up the language that I think was Tabasco's. She picked up that language, and um, she was able to pick up Spanish really quick. So she made a great interpreter, and apparently she was smoking hot, too. So uh, Hernán Cortés uh, fathered a child with her, and that was the first mestizo, the first mixed um, race Mexican in Mexico. <laughs> Anyways... The answer is the same, is I don't know. What do we put down on the census? I don't know. Put other. Put, oh, I think mixed is now an option. Or you can put other and write in mixed. The the, the thing about studying this and, and researching this, the biggest thing is that, it, what does it fucking matter? Why do they want to ask what your race is? A completely made up thing that has no scientific background to it at all. Why do they want to track that? Keep keep track. I don't know. Okay, folks, I think I'm winding down. I didn't refer to my notes that much, and I ended up saying, covering everything. Uh, another thing is, to be Latino means to ha- be come from the origin of Latin America. And... To be Hispanic means to be basically be one who speaks the Spanish language. All right. So the difference there is if you're Latino, you're from Latin America. If you're his, if you're Hispanic, you're from a country who speaks Spanish. So let me throw a little, let me throw a little uh, a monkey bridge in there. Brazil. What would you be classified as? Would you be Hispanic if you're from Brazil? No. The answer is no. Because they speak Portuguese. They don't speak Spanish. Would you be Latino if you're from Brazil? The answer is yes. Because they're from Latin America. All right. I just... Another mistake I made for a long time was saying that... Thinking that Hispanic meant the same as Latino. And experiencing things like... Oh, in the Air Force, Avery Base would have like... Hispan- oh, Hispanic Heritage Month. Motherfuckers go crazy. Hispanic Heritage Month. And I was like, well, why is Spain involved? Those fuckers aren't Hispanic. They're European. Well, yeah, they're Hispanic because they speak Spanish. Stupid. Uh, Latinos Unidos was uh, the Latin American cultural club at, at the Air Force Base I was stationed in. And then um, they had Spain was one of the categories like hey, people from you know Venezuela Mexico Peru Espana I'm like this motherfucker is European 
And that's when I was right. I was right at that time because it's Latinos Unidos. Fucking Europeans ain't supposed to be in there. Get out of here. Shit. I'm just kidding. One, well, I, I wasn't kidding. I don't care now. Or now I know the difference. See, like every, I was confused. All these years I was confused. And I'm glad that my man asked a question. I wish I remember his name. I'm glad he asked me a question and glad that I, I downloaded it. I still got another book that's going to cover all of Latin America. But I hit this one that targeted Mexico itself. Learned a lot. And then the whole trying to figure out races and studying that. I learned a lot from that too. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. Anyways, my name is David Soto Jr., folks, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at David E. Soto Jr. JR for Jr. Don't forget the E because some motherfuckers just David Soto Jr. So I had to be David E. Soto Jr. Instagram, David E. Soto Jr. And my website is www.davidsotorice.com. I'm an author. I write books and articles and memoirs and shit like that. And, uh, I'm working on, I'm going to tell you what I'm working on. I'm working on publishing my third book in a series. I didn't know it was going to be a series, but it's going to be a series. It's a series. And I don't know. I just love every bit of this process, and I'm excited. I renamed the first two books, redesigned the covers a little bit, and the third one's going to fall into place. Boom, when I'm done working with that, then I'm going to work on the fourth one, which I have enough material for. i got to i got to finish a couple stories and possibly got to write one more. And that'll be a fourth book. And it's cool. The whole thing is cool. And if you're uh, interested, you can find me on Amazon, David Soto Jr. And check out my stuff. I'd appreciate it. All right. That's it, folks. Thanks. (laughs) 